Hey, hey everybody, I'm Sean. And I'm Steph. And we are right here at Rampant Design. Welcome to episode number two of Running Rampant, a little show that takes you behind the scenes of Rampant Design, talks about what it's like to run a small business, and uh, lets you ask any questions, which is kind of dangerous, but uh, we'll take any questions that you have for us about pretty much anything. Keep it PG. On today's episode, we're going to talk about Film Riot, funding, and the flu. That's right. <laughs> All right, so episode two, and uh, I feel like I've been hit by a truck. How about how are you feeling today? Uh, not quite the truck status, but uh, it's been better. Yeah, it's been a, it's so. been a crazy week. Uh, we got to work on I got to work on Film Riot, which is like a bucket list thing for me. It's uh, it was pretty amazing. You'll see the link right down here um, to check out the entire episode. But it was uh, an amazing experience. I got to work with one of my all-time favorite directors, working on one of my favorite shows, and uh, you know I've had the I've been lucky to work with big big directors like Oliver Stone. Glenn Larson, um, Aaron Spelling, um, producers and directors, um, and uh, now I get to work with Ryan, and he was actually a really cool guy. He you was know? very cool. He was very nice. And very, very, very nice. It was a, a real honor to work on the show. Um, it was a lot of fun, and um, part of doing the show, I had to do a tutorial. Well, I recorded that tutorial with about 102, 103 fever, and I'm pretty sure I have about that same fever now. I also uh, did a, um, an interview on Broadcast Beat, which was awesome, with the world-famous Ryan Salazar. Also with a fever. It's been a fever week. Yeah. We've, we've, had, we've been sick this week. Um, it's basically, um, I can't call in sick. If I call in sick, who's going to take over for me? You know? We don't have any other employees. No, this is it right here. So <laughs> there's nobody else to do it. But. So because we're committed to doing the show, um, I'm drowning in NyQuil and coffee and other medicine. I'm 80% sure I'm hallucinating all of this, but... We're going to push through it and get this done because uh, we got a lot of support from episode one. Tons we of did. comments, phone calls. We did. Phone calls. We got phone calls. We did about phone calls. <laughs> That's pretty wild. That was pretty neat. Um, yeah, I just, phone calls. I mean, That's pretty cool. Yeah. Something else that got started this week was the uh, runningrampant.biz site. The website's up and running. All her. Build all that out this week. It looks pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with it. I like the way it came out. And so go check it out. You can actually go there and subscribe to iTunes. Uh, we have a Stitcher account now. And you can see our vlogs there. So you can subscribe to YouTube as well. I think we, all, we have, also have SoundCloud. So iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and YouTube. You can never miss running rampant. There's really no excuse. We are everywhere that you want to be. So take us in your car. Take us on a run. We're don't, that exciting. Don't take us on a run. <laughs> that, that's just really sad. <laughs> but you can take us wherever you need to take us, and uh, we'll be there. So subscribe and any other things. And if you want to, which would be really, really, really cool, on iTunes, if you have Mac, go to iTunes and leave a review for us. You can do it on a PC as well. I don't know why it's a Mac thing. but yes. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Okay, so I That's learned something today. So yeah, if you have iTunes, go and uh, subscribe there and leave us a review. It helps our standing and our ranking and all that stuff, which is, I guess it's important. Don't hate on her too much for the whole Mac thing. She's Final Cut Steph. She's not aware of anything outside of the Mac universe. So it's all good. It's all good. I like Macs. Yeah. Sorry, I like <laughs> Macs. Um, let's see. Other than that, that's, so we did this week, we had the site go live. And, and. For those of you out there who work in WordPress or coding, I'm really, really impressed with Steph's work. She ripped this site out in a matter of hours, uh, put it together because she felt the need to, to make a landing page specifically for uh, Running Rampant. So it went from concept to completion in a matter of hours. I'm really, really, really impressed with Stephanie's work ethic and her coding because on top of all the coding, she's answering phone calls, answering emails. I mean, the phone does not stop ringing. It really doesn't. So... Um, I'm really just uh, could not be pr more proud of Stephanie and her, her work. Check it out. Let us know what you think. Go to runningrampant.biz and uh, check out the site. Tell us what you think. Yeah. So that's it. That, that, that's, that's, that's pretty that's much it. the week for us. Um, besides Sean having the flu and trying to get him better uh, with the Film Riot thing, which was really, really cool. I uh, love the Film Riot gang. They're amazing. They. Yeah, Ryan and Josh. Just amazing. Uh, everybody there. I mean, they've. You know, you work with a lot of directors. I, I've been working in, uh, as a visual effects artist for over 20 years. I've worked with a lot of directors, both independent and Hollywood, and you never know what you're going to get into. And, and, I, and I truly am, am saying this, that Ryan's one of the nicest guys I've worked with. I, I'm, you know, I, I'm not being paid to say that or anything. He really, truly is as kind as you would think he is, and that's always a, a, a reassuring thing in this industry. 
was really nice. Yeah, it was, uh, those guys are all they're all phenomenal. And, the uh, episode is really cool. You should go check it out. It was um, a lot of fun. It's uh, pushing a car uh, with force. So, or, or forcefully otherwise known pushing, as, whatever it's called. Otherwise known as the force push, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so here's the part of the show where we take questions, and believe it or not, we got a lot of questions from one episode. Which That's what we were kind of tripping on, is that um, between phone calls and messages and emails and, uh, and other ways, like friends texting and whatnot, we got a lot of comments on one episode. It's pretty wild. So we got a couple comments. So our first question is from Ted, and Ted asks, I've been in the biz since 1990, taught production work at high schools and home schools, and worked for numerous companies and myself. The most satisfying work was anything on my own, but I never could do it full time. How do you keep it going on your own? Any tips? This one hits really close to home for me. This I mean, is a great question. This is a actually. good question. Um, and this is for everybody, freelancers, or this really applies to a lot of people. So For sure. Here's uh, our story about that kind of stuff. Um, as you know, as any of you know, full-time in production is not 40 hours. There's no such thing as a 40-hour work week, at least not for me. And I've been doing this for 20 years. So in, in, my, in my career, whether it's been in Hollywood or corporate or freelance or whatever, I've never worked a 40-hour job. It's always been way longer. 60 to 80 hours is about the average, uh, sometimes as much as 100 um, or more. Um, so that being said, I would work my 60, 80-hour job and then come home, regardless of whatever time of night it was, and then I'd sit down and have some dinner with Steph and then I'd go to my office and I'd start working rampant for a full-time job. So I'd do another eight hours or whatever I could before I had to go back to work. I'd sleep for about an hour and go back to my day job and do it all over again. Uh, and then on the weekends, it was all rampant all the time. Not saying that's the healthiest thing for you. That's um, not necessarily, the, the, it's not really, really great for your brain. But if you really want to get off the grid, you have to be dedicated and surround yourself with people who support you. I could have never done this if it wasn't for Stephanie. And she would always remind me, hey, you know, this is what you want. This is what we want. Uh, let's just keep pushing forward. And, uh, well, I mean, it was it was so insane that uh, I never saw Stephanie. So what? You put a cot in my office. I did. I, I didn't. Um, I knew we were doing this new business thing. And I was working full time. And Sean was working full time. And I just never saw him. So I was like, what's going on? How, how can I be more part of this? So I actually put a cot behind Sean's um, desk in our office and said, well, here I am. So I would do my, my grading of my papers and any kind of teacher stuff. I would do it right there with him because I felt like I never got to see him. And that was most of the, I mean, that was, gosh, that was the most, the first two years of rampant, he was working full time. And then uh, actually three years, it was the first three years of rampant mm -hmm. working full time with uh, doing rampant as a, the freelance gig. And it was a lot of work and it takes a lot of work to do it. It, yes. it is not something that just happens overnight, you know, and, Everybody says that it's just an overnight success. Well, that's definitely not us. And no. um, if that's you, that's great. But it wasn't our story. If that's you, call me. Yeah. I want to know your recipe. I want to know your secret. It's it's hard. And um, for freelancing as well, it, it is uh, to take yourself away from doing it. And, and even those three years, we just sort of, it wasn't, it just ended up being that we ended up just kind of breaking the cord and realizing after doing, you know, cost analysis of what are our bills, how much do we need to survive? Okay, well, we have this. Can we do this with Rampant? And we just sort of were like, yeah, we can do this. We can do the, you know, pay our bills, pay Rampant's bills. We don't need a full-time job anymore with the full-time responsibility of Rampant as well. So it's one of those things where if you are a freelancer, and you still are working, you're working two jobs, it's very difficult. But I think my biggest tip for that would be to sit down and be honest with yourself. Say, this is, you know, my these are my bills. This is what I have to pay. This is how much I have to bring in. And if you can honestly bring that in by yourself, do it by yourself. I mean, that's... Well, look, it's easier said than done. Uh, the very first couple months that we were truly off the grid was a nightmare. It was scary. <laughs> I'm I'm a huge worrier. I'm I'm she's far more the balanced human being in this bunch. I am highs and lows all the time. I'm just I'm I'm your quintessential artist. I'm just all over the place and she handles that. So she deserves a raise. Uh it's it's rough. It's just rough. You're constantly looking at each other going how are we going to pay this bill? It always works out and that's great, but yeah, we bootstrap the company. Every dime that comes back into the company, we put right back into the company. So we don't do a lot of things. We, once a year, we go on vacation, and Stephanie uh, likes to make fun videos. So if you want to see that, we'll put go ahead and put a, a little video, a, a link to our videos on there. We do fun stuff. So 
Um, because we make video for a living, why not do it when you're not working? I, I, don't, I don't really have a, an answer for that. But it, it, the, the thing that, that's difficult with pulling off the grid is it's all about fear. And we've got a few friends uh, that, that help, help support us. Having her, having each other has been crucial. You cannot do this. If your partner uh, does not believe in what you're doing, this is not going to happen for you, period. So the fact that she, not only is she a part of Rampant, but she's a supporter of it uh, may, means that we're going to succeed. Um, I have about what, three friends, I think, that I like to call out about this particular subject. Our buddy Mike Frizzell, he taught us something called fear, and, and, and it's false evidence appearing real. A lot of the times when people are projecting on you and telling you you can't do this, they're really saying they can't do this because they're, they're too also afraid of, of trying to pull off the grid and trying to do something different. Entrepreneurship and running your own business is not for everybody. There's the highest highs and the lowest lows. I've had the absolute best time and the absolute worst time. I mean, we've been stolen from, from yeah. four different companies we've been stolen from. And I'm not saying someone took our idea and ran with it. That's fine. That's the free market. That's a wonderful thing for the customers. No, I'm, I'm talking about they went into our library, took my effects that I've worked hard on, changed the file name, and sold them and take credit for them. That's happened four times. And then you get lawyers involved and nonsense. I mean, it's enough to make you physically ill. I mean, you get depressed. You know, so on top of the money, you got all that nonsense. So why do you keep doing it? Well, uh, you, you surround yourself with a network of people who have the same ideas. So I got Mike Purcell, who has told us time and time again to keep moving forward. And that's our mantra here. Keep yeah. moving forward. No matter what, every little bit helps towards your goal. You're always going to run into an issue. Oh, of course. So of course. we tackle each issue every day and move a little bit forward towards our goal, you know, for rampant. So, you know, there's always going to be a hurdle. There's always going to be an obstacle. Mm -hmm. And by us always knowing that, okay, well, let's just do it. There's no, we don't have the luxury of saying, okay, we're not going to tackle it. We just, we have to. So we do it and we keep going and that's, so that's, you know, that Mike yep. has helped us with that and keeping us on track and going to the, trying to get to the finish line. So. And, and it helps to surround yourself with people, even if they're not in the same industry. If, they're, if you know somebody else who's an entrepreneur or doing something unique, reach out to them. You'll never know. Like, I have a friend, Steven. He go, he's an artist. He goes by the name Voice. He used to run the show Gamer Nerds. He and I talk offline all the time about what it's like to be an entrepreneur, what it's like to put yourself out there and, and be vulnerable, and what it's like to, you know, do something different, and uh, he's been invaluable to me personally. And then, of course, to us, um, we're good friends with Iographer. Uh, the guy who runs Iographer is Dave Bolsuto. He is an amazing human being and has been nothing but kind to us, and he's far further along in the industry than we are as, in terms of running a, a successful business. But he has really helped uh, us with, with positivity and guidance and just just telling us you know, uh, about what it's like where he's where, from his perspective. And so uh, it's really important to just reach out to people. You'd be surprised that if you just are kind and send an email to somebody, they'll probably write you back. So um, yeah, we're just super grateful for all the people who've helped us uh, behind the scenes for sure. Yeah, it's definitely a, an effort by a group of people. It's mm -hmm. not just us. I mean, we, you know, every and everybody, customers to friends to colleagues to other business, you know, people that you meet, you can sort of take a little bit from every time you see somebody and sort of store it away and keep that. Keep a journal. Keep whatever you need You need to do to keep you propelling towards your goal is what you need to do. And that's what we do. Um, it's it's hard. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not easy. Um, but Just keep, keep moving going. forward. I mean, that's it, it, that seems almost trite, but it, it, it really helps you. Keep moving forward. Do one thing every single day that will get you towards your goal. And before you know it, you will be there. So... That's probably the best advice I have for, for Ted. Yeah. I hope that's and good. if you you can do it, ever don't. Oh, absolutely! Don't Anybody think can do that this. You can't, um, even though it isn't for everybody. If you want to do it, you can do it. And mm -hmm. but there was a lot of a lot of fear, and and there's know. still fear to this day. I mean, oh, yeah. it's been years oh, yeah. since we've had a, a, a regular paycheck. Um, but there there's fear. I mean, yeah. there's times where you know. The, the market is slow and you're like, well, maybe I should get some freelance work going or yeah. maybe I should reach out to some clients and just see if they, if they need any animation or compositing work. You right, know? right. Um, you, start, you start to you know, panic a little bit. You start to sweat going, well, what's going to happen now? You know, what's going on? So, um, and we have that. We have low months where oh. we have to you know, pull it in and you know, just try to cut our spending down. We don't have a lot of wiggle room with rampant because we so, we're so tight as it is mm -hmm. as far as our budget goes. But you know, we'll stop eating – you know, we'll have, instead of having chicken, we have spaghetti. I mean, it's kind of, we you, you take out where you can take out, and if it takes, you know, taking a $10 meal and making it a dollar, then that's what we do. For so sure. For sure. It's, uh, 
you know, you start taking away those extra utilities if you don't need them, like cable, and uh, it just, there are, are ways that we do to keep our budget down, you know, and rampant's our last pull from. So we always pull from us personally, mm -hmm. and then we take, go to rampant. So we really try to give everything we can to rampant. And yeah, we don't really do a whole lot outside of rampant, um, which is not good for us. We try to go to the parks and stuff, and we try to, we go on one vacation a year. Uh, one, one week a year, we completely pull off the grid. Um, but um, for the most part, we just don't. Uh, everything goes back to the company because it's still small. It's still it's like trying to keep a fire going. You just have to keep putting, you just have to keep stoking it. You have to keep you know making sure that nothing's putting it out. So, uh, um, but surround yourself with, with people who are like minded. You know, make sure that uh, the people in your group are positive and supportive. If they're not, you might want to consider cutting them out of, of your of your group. So, and that's a hard thing to do. But uh, you know, make sure that everyone around you is supportive of you. Otherwise, you may have to start cutting people out of your contact list. All right, so next up. All right, so the next question comes from Corey. And Corey asks, you mentioned taxes in your last episode, and I'm wondering if I should do my taxes myself or go to a place like H&R Block. This is all her. This is a great question. And um, before Rampant, I would have said, oh, just do H&R Block or do it yourself online. It's easy. But now I've learned with the business and us personally that there are a little bit of differences. So my answer to that would be that if you are – if you have W-2s and you don't have any 1099s, so you're not a contractor for anybody, and you don't have any deductions, then definitely you can probably do your taxes online. Um, there's a million sites, TurboTax, H&R Block. All of them have it. We've used them uh, before when we were working full-time. But now that we have Rampant, and Sean's a contractor with Rampant, so he gets 1099s now, and Rampant's a whole separate issue. But uh, if you have 1099s and you have deductions, Find someone who understands being a contractor. Don't go to H&R Block. They don't, they're just a mat, and I'm sorry for anybody. I'm not trying to make H&R Block mad, but they don't have your personal interest in their best interest for them. So if you want to go um, find a CPA who understands what it is to be a contractor, who understands 1099s and understands your deductions, interview them. Ask them if, they, you know, know I have these deductions, you know, I'm, I'm doing travel stuff and I'm doing, I have equipment and all this stuff. They, they should know how to put all that into mm -hmm. um, as a write-off or whatever they're going to do for it. So definitely do not do your taxes yourself, which is what we said last time. But, and you can do them online if you have W-2s and no deductions. But if you are 1099 contractor with the deductions, find a CPA who is qualified to handle that. And I would stay away from those mass guys because I don't trust them. Yeah, so. sometimes you just need to spend the money, and it's going to yeah. be a little bit more expensive than than H and R Block, <laughs> but they'll have your best interest at heart. And that's and that's how you interview them. Like, look, I I'm, I work for a special niche industry. Here's the kind of things that I that, that I work with. Here's the kind of gear that I use: camera equipment, computers, whatever, internet costs, Dropbox, you know, whatever. Find someone who understands. Oh, these are the costs of doing business. Well, H and R Block doesn't necessarily know that. These a lot of these people are, are part time. They're only working for H&R Block during tax season, and then they're off doing something else. So you might want to find someone who's a little bit more qualified, who can take the time to go, oh, okay, wait a second. And, they'll, and they should ask you the right questions. So uh, yeah. just, take a, just take a little time and find the right accountant for you. Uh, I, I know it saved us quite a bit of money over the years. So um, you just do the right – do what you can. If, if money is super tight where you have to do something that's free, then, then you know, do what you can. But um, you'll end up making your money back very quickly, I think. Yeah, and you're always keeping yourself safe, you know, yeah. with – when you start doing deductions and stuff, you want to have somebody who got who had your back when it, if you did get an audit. You know that mm -hmm. is that big audit word is scary in the tax world. So yeah, I don't cover know your I, butt. I don't know what I'd do if I had to have H and R Block defend me at an IRS audit. <laughs> I, I think that's kind of frightening. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All yeah. right, and that's <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to keep this episode a little so bit shorter. Keeping it short for you. Um, that's all for this week. Yeah, that's it. Thank you for ev all your comments. We were just flooded with comments. Um. I wish I had the comment about the comic book store. We'd love to. <laughs> That's right. Somebody wrote about a comic book store. I have no idea what you're saying. Um, we don't own a comic book we store. Don't, I would like to own a comic book store, I guess. Are they profitable? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I'm always looking to add to our portfolio, but um, yeah, I don't. we don't have any idea what you're talking about. So if you could come right back and just tell us what you meant by what are you guys doing with the comic book store. I mean, if there's a rampant comic book store, I'd like to know about it. So uh, that would be pretty cool. That'd be but, neat. Uh, 
Yeah, no idea what you're talking about. But thank you to everybody for all of your comments. We were yes. actually flooded with comments, uh, more so than we expected, considering it was our very first episode and just a trial thing. I had no idea what, what it was going to be. Right. So, so thank you for uh, t going on this journey with us. I'll let yeah. you take us home here. Um, and don't forget to subscribe. Remember, you can go to runningrampant.biz, that dot B-I-Z. Um, you'll see our, our vlog there. You can also subscribe to iTunes, um, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. Everything is there. You can leave a review there. You can leave a comment there. You can do a lot there. So go check that out. Subscribe so you don't miss the next episode of Running Rampant. And that's about that. Um, as yeah. always, uh, don't forget your comments and questions. We love hearing them and we love reading them. And, you know, it makes us think, yeah. which is fun. <laughs> I always like to be forced to think. Um, make sure to go check out in the next episode too. I believe we're going to be on the road next episode. We're shooting, ah, yes. we're shooting effects in New York City and in New Jersey. That's correct. So that's fun. Big so Apple and we will be on the road Garden for that State. one. So that will be a, a, an interesting. It's going to all be recorded on the fly. So, um, but yeah, we're working with our good friends at Sea Light Entertainment. So, shooting brand new effects for uh, 2016. Looking forward to that. And um, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, okay. once again, I'm Sean. And I'm Steph. And we're Rampant Design. Thanks for watching, everybody. Run rampant, y'all. Bye. Any lower? <laughs> See, that's the look everyone's talking about. You're an audio animatronic.